When I grow old, said my mother, I'll change my life. I'll rent the garret on the left bank of the Seine in Paris. Give up being a mother and a wife. Spend my days painting. Drink red wine all night. My friends will be artists. Maybe I'll write. But what about Dad? I objected. My mother reflected. He'll be okay, she said. He'll buy a jalabi, sandals, a scarab. He'll live in the desert along with the Arabs. He's learning the, the lingo at evening class. He'll go over to Gaza. I thought, what a gas. I'll spend April in Paris, winter with Dad. There was going to be some fun to be had. I hoped that my parents' dreams all would come true. But after all that, they just moved down to viewed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, this is a poem called Twinkling. He called me a cunt. Oi, you're a cunt. I thanked him for the compliment. Couldn't conceive of anything more beautiful to be. <laughs> this is a delightful little ditty called Otto. You made the opening incision with almost clinical precision. Took the heart out. Found it one. Took the top of the head. Removed the mind. What exactly was it you expected to find? I looked at you with sad eyes that said it wouldn't have hurt half as much if you'd only waited an hour. <laughs> and it's called Our Health in Ages Past. The poplars bow and sing and roar. Glimpses of the racing clouds glower among the tossing branches. Wet leaves quit my boots. My God was in my head when I was ten. My eternal home, the warm kitchen, waiting beyond the lonely lane. I run the gauntlet of the heaving trees. I sing my piping hymn out loud. Oh God, I'll help in ages past. The sounds of paper shield, my talisman, my shelter from the icy blast. Mm. <laughs> this is called Crazy Loneliness, High Dutch Memory of a Beautiful Girl. Crazy Loneliness. I just memory the beautiful ground. Last night I missed you so much I made love to your nightdress passionately. Now your nightdress hides from me, slinks under covers and pillows, avoids my eyes. I can't take another night without you. Your nighty can't take another night with me. I am holding your dresses hostage, threatening them with kisses, caresses as they make one false move. Your other clothes tremble in the wardrobe. <laughs> Come back to me. And here's a little one that I wrote about going back to the house where I was happiest in Fareham. Um, and it had been changed into a house of bed scissors. It's a listed building, so the outside looked exactly the same, but it had 12 doorbells. So I fantasized about going inside and finding that I was haunting it. Bed sitter. Sometimes when you pause, key poised in the dark oak hall, time shifts, a stillness, then you throw open the door on your familiar space. The room is empty, of course. The electric ring, the single bed, wait innocently. The muffled laughter, the sobs, were not heard from here. A restless presence slips past from the empty room into the empty hallway, leaves it empty. Speaking of clothes, this is called clothes have no memory. 
I know now you think your throat will talk to you in the morning and say, Put me on, put me on, where's my, where's my? That's the song you're right today, so I don't know what you're on. Okay, clothes have no memory. Your most prized dress must confess that it cannot remember the swell of your breath, the rise and fall of your breathing. Clothes have no memory. It is winter now and your summer frock has totally forgotten the sheer sudden shockedness of being underneath it all, totally Nicholas. Kisses like butterflies alighting high, high, on your inner thigh, so it didn't go there now. <laughs> Clothes have no memory. Your bra, unhooked, unhinged, cannot really recall the thrill of it all as my hands, with each caress, creates your breath. Clothes have no memory. Clothes have no memory. But I tell Mm. At dawn, we leave the warm kitchen. The pigs are squealing at their clanging, clanging bins as we face winter's grey school day. There's a mile of trials before us. Dark, dripping lanes, bordered by bracken and brittle cow parsley umbrellas. A mile of boredom laced with fear. Before the long lanes turn, the witch's house, roofless, crouches by the hedge. We dare not pass the peeling door, the empty frames, the sycamore growing from its dead centre for fear of the ghosts we've summoned. We stop and count to four, hop left-legged to the other side, stride past the evil place in 19 steps, chanting an incantation. So. We exorcise the spectres we planted there. On past the wood where the bottomless quarry holds the bones, they say, of children just like us. At last, we gain the village and catch the crowded bus. I sit and gaze, amazed, as you create a rubber mould of your vulva. You ask me what I think. I grin and blink. It's, it's, it's something else, but what's it for? It's for you, because I love all the things that you do to it. Well, all right. For years, your masterpiece held private place above our mantelpiece, created heated debate over how much was too much or how far was too far or it often to be allowed. It always made me smile. People were often affronted, but you being you as was your once, put on a brave front, proudly declaring, I am not ashamed of my coming. Years later we broke up and it ended up in an attic, neatly packaged and covered in dried wild flowers. I wrote and asked if you wanted your vulva back. You wrote back and said, oh yes, please, in big, bold, capital letters. And so it was returned like the Rosetta Stone to its original owner. With a little note attached that simply said, thank you for the gift of this and for lending it to me for all these years. It was greatly loved and greatly missed and sealed with love and a single kiss. Thank you. Thank you.